Hello and uh, welcome all of you. Let's continue with our uh, unit number three. And uh, today uh, we'll almost cover the whatever the remaining part in the unit number three. As last time we were started with the intermediate code generation and uh, related with its type that already uh, in last lecture we have seen the what exactly is the intermediate code and its three types. And also regarding the three address code in details we have studied along with its different types of the representation. So today we will discuss about the remaining two types of the intermediate code generation which are uh, rarely used uh, because the mostly utilized uh, three address uh, mostly utilized intermediate code is nothing but the three address code along with its different types of the representation. So as all of you know uh, this is the diagram for uh, indication uh, indicating you the different phases of compiler wherein the compilation process is nothing but the sequence of different phases where each phase take the input from the previous stage and generate some output and give the that output as a input to the next phase of compiler and accordingly each phase play their part until the final target code will get generated so that is the whole process in the compilation each uh, phases generate the particular output like lexical analysis generate token syntax analysis generate the parse tree semantic analysis generate the annotated parse tree intermediate code generation generate the three address code and the code optimization generate the optimized three address code and finally the core generator phase generate the uh, particular assembly language code as a uh, our machine code and uh, now uh, we are at the fourth phase that is our intermediate code which is uh, also last time i told you uh, which uh, intermediate code generator is the fourth phase which uh, which translate your source code into the some intermediate code and why this code is called is a intermediate code because last time i told you as it is the code between the source code and finally generated machine code that is the reason it is called as a intermediate code okay so that that code lie that code lies between the high level language code and the low level language code and uh, what is its necessity need that last time also i told you it contain the abstract information of all previous phases of compiler okay and uh, its need uh, that last time also i told you i just read it for your uh, uh, you know to refresh you like uh, as you know the because of the intermediate code the compiler don't have to read the source program again and again as the ic contain all the required information from analysis phase of, of compiler if ic is not generated the machine code will not be incorrect but time required to generate that machine code will be the more and efficiency of the compiler will reduce because during synthesis phase that is during the back end processing of uh, your program by the compiler compiler need to refer to the analysis phase and the source program if ic is generated then there will be no need to refer the analysis phase again and again okay so the intermediate code keep the analysis portion same for the all the compilers that is the reason uh, it doesn't need a full compiler for every unique compiler okay even the uh, the ma machine change from the particular configuration like uh, if you change the machine from 32 bit to the 64 bit then there is a no need to develop the whole compiler again you have to just develop the back end of the compiler because front end of the compiler is considered to be the machine independent okay and that machine independency we get because of the generation of the intermediate code okay so the intermediate code generator receive the input from its predecessor as a previous phase as a semantic analyzer phase it take that input in the form of annotated parse tree and finally it generate the intermediate code and uh, in that uh, different types of the intermediate code also i told you uh, one of the important and most utilized type is the three address code okay and uh, then syntax tree and the directed uh, cyclic graph okay so these two today we are going to discuss this already last time we have discussed along with its representation so three address code is nothing but the the code which contains the at most three operands and uh, operator that particular uh, code is considered as a three address code as it is containing the at most three operands 
uh, that is the reason it is called as a three address code and there are the three main types of its representation like i we have seen it last time the quadruple triple and the indirect triple these are the three important types of uh, three address code so once again i am telling you here the what exactly is the three address code so a statement enolling no more than three references okay two for the operands and one for the result is known as a three address statements means the statement containing the utmost three operands okay a sequence of three address statement is known as the three address code three address statement is of the form like x is equal to y of z y of in the sense operator here x y z will have the address memory locations okay sometimes a statement might contain less than three references but it is still called a three address statement even some statement contain the uh, two operands or uh, one operand then also it is considered as a three address statement okay only that statement should not have the more than three uh, operands okay in that case only we cannot call that particular statement as a three address statement or a three address code it should have the at most three addresses okay uh, the address uh, it uh, three operands it can be one also it can be two also or it can be maximum three also so here are one again uh, once again we are taking the another example of three address code for the expression suppose you have the expression like this a plus b into c plus d how the three address code for this expression can be generated so i told you the some rules for three address code generation that you need to uh, think about the uh, precedence of the operator now here you can see this is the sub expression having the uh, operator as a multiplication which is having the highest precedence as compared with the rest of the operators so first we will generate the three address code for this sub expression so we will take the help of a temporary variable t1 equal to b into c then next we have the now remaining uh, part is this and this so which one for which one we should create the three address code first now plus plus both are having the same precedence but here you have to follow the left to right associativity so first we generate the three address code for this part okay and so that is the reason second statement we will have t2 equal to a plus t1 means three address code for this part will be generated okay and then remaining part is only this so lastly we will take another temporary variable t3 equal to t2 plus d means for whole expression uh, this three address code contain the uh, result of the whole expression that is a t3 equal to t2 plus d t2 is nothing but our this part and d is a last operand okay so here you can see the t1 t2 t3 are the all temporary variables okay and for these uh, three address code you can have the four representation like uh, quadruple triple and the indirect triple and how to generate that that already last time i told you okay now let's see the another type of uh, intermediate code which generally not get utilized but we have to study that so second type of uh, intermediate code uh, is the syntax tree okay which also you know okay and uh, uh, you know to understand that we will compare it with the parse tree so that you can get the clear idea uh, as a what exactly is a difference between the syntax tree and the parse tree and why uh, for the intermediate code syntax tree is chosen over the parse tree okay now first we let's discuss about the uh, parse tree so when you create the parse tree now that parse tree generally contain the more details than actually needed so it is very difficult for the compiler to parse that particular parse tree okay means what the parse tree contain the uh, full details okay complete details but in that uh, some of the details might not be uh, so useful understood so uh, that uh, parse tree may contain the graphical representation for some unnecessary thing also okay so too much details is being uh, uh, shown in the parse tree as compared with the syntax tree uh, let's see uh, what exactly it means in the example for example we have the expression id plus id into the id now for this expression using this given grammar we have to generate the parse tree okay 
so you can simply start with the root so we start from the root e derives e plus t okay e derives e plus t then uh, we have the uh, now we have to focus on this expression we have, we have for this expression we have to generate the power stream okay then we have uh, you can see uh, next part now here there uh, one more rule is missing here that is the here it should be e derives e plus t or e derives t okay and so we write uh, next uh, part of parse e derives t t derives f and f derives i similarly this part we can uh, graphically mention here then t derives t into f t derives here t derives f must be there and then f derives id similarly t derives uh, f derives id here okay so you can see this uh, partially contain the too much details means it is containing the uh, graph uh, grammar symbols also being there in the uh, this parse tree you can see the grammar symbol are also be included in the parse tree but there is a no need to uh, have the grammar symbol in this parse tree uh, if you consider the uh, utilization of uh, parse tree for the intermediate code okay so for that purpose uh, the syntax tree is chosen now for the same expression how the syntax tree can be drawn let's see then we'll see the then you understand what exactly is the difference now for the same expression and uh, for this grammar no. okay here simple one change e derives e derives t also i write okay now this is the uh, parse tree generated okay for the given expression and the grammar now if you try to draw the syntax tree for this we can have this kind of syntax tree for the same grammar with the for, uh, for the given expression what is that id plus id id plus id into id id plus id into into id understood if you compare this uh, parse tree and uh, this uh, if you compare this tree and this tree now which one is a uh, uh, more compact or the more abstract now this is the more compact tree and the more abstract tree which containing the required information for this particular expression understood according to this grammar so if you see this uh, this tree it don't containing any uh, grammar symbols understood but this containing the grammar symbol that is the reason size of this tree is more as compared to this tree okay and that is the reason we call this tree as a parse tree and this tree as a syntax tree okay and because of its uh, uh, less size and abstractive nature this syntax tree is also called as a abstract syntax tree also this is also called as what abstract syntax tree why it is called as a abstract because it containing the only the necessary information only the required information it doesn't contain the unnecessary things like grammatical symbols and all these things so as compared with this parse tree this tree is having the uh compact uh, nature okay abstractive nature that is the reason this is being chosen for the intermediate code instead of the parse tree and similar things i have mentioned here in parse tree the most of the lip nodes are single child to their parent nodes in the syntax tree we can uh, we can eliminate this extra information so extra information is what here this grammatical symbols is considered as extra information okay so that can be eliminated here you can see syntax tree is a variant of the parse tree so from the parse tree only we can have the syntax tree it is a, a variant of the parse tree only in the syntax tree interior nodes are the operators means these nodes these nodes are the these are the interior nodes these are being considered as all the operators understood and leaves are the operand means these these are the leaves these are considered as a operands understood so syntax tree is usually used when the when we represent a program in the tree structure for the intermediate code okay so that is the reason uh, for the intermediate code generation 
parse tree is not prefer instead of that syntax tree or the abstract syntax tree is being prefer understood i hope all of you got the difference between the parse tree and the syntax tree or the abstract syntax tree so simple difference is there this contain the too much details this is contain only the required details it doesn't contain the any grammatical uh, rules and the symbols etc okay so this is the all about the uh, syntax tree or the abstract syntax tree here also i have mentioned so uh, syntax tree is a abstract uh, representation of the uh, parse tree that is the reason it is also called as abstract syntax tree so uh, syntax tree don't provide uh, every characteristic information from the real syntax okay it just provide you the required characteristic and that is the reason uh, it is uh, that abstract syntax tree is a important data structure in the compiler uh, for the intermediate code okay and uh, it as i said it contain the least unnecessary information least unnecessary information in the sense it contain the in necessary information only okay maximum information which is being shown in this graphical representation is the necessary information for the compiler so as i said the abstract syntax tree are the more compact uh, than the parse tree okay and that is the reason it is uh, it can be easily used by the compiler for the uh, intermediate code generation okay so that is all about the syntax tree that is the second type of intermediate code okay now third and uh, which is being uh, also utilized uh, for the generation of intermediate code that is the dag dag stand for here directed acyclic graph okay so uh, directed acyclic graph as a dag is also uh, one kind of abstract syntax tree and uh, but there is one difference here as compared with the abstract syntax tree that you will see in the example also let me tell you theoretically here also now in case of the abstract syntax tree uh, 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 particular node for each different each value the particular node is generated means what even the same value is being repeated two times three times means for example this is the expression a plus b this is the one expression another expression we have a plus b into c okay now if you go to generate the syntax tree for this expression okay a plus b into c or uh, if you take the uh, more uh, easy example or uh, understandable example like this yes uh, let me tell you here suppose we have a plus b Okay, a plus b into a plus b into c. So if this is the expression, now in this expression you can easily see this a plus b is the same expression repeated two times. Now when you go for the drawing the syntax tree for these, you have to generate the two nodes for. this repeated expression means you have to generate the one node for this expression also and for this expression also but in case of the dag the particular uh, what we can say the node will be generated for the unique value only for the unique expression only understood means a plus b here and the a plus b here this is the same uh, kind of sub expression we can say so in the syntax tree even if these two expression are the same two uh, two nodes will be generated for this understood but in case of the dag only one node will be generated for this understood only one node will be generated for this means that is the reason here i have mentioned each node of the dag contains the unique value what each node of the dag contains the unique value understood means repeated for the repeated value nodes will not be generated in case of the dag but in case of the abstract syntax tree for the repeated value also node will be get generated understood and what will happen because of that uh, the size of the tree get enlarged and that disadvantage is being uh, removed in case of the directed acyclic graph now in the syntax tree you may have the cycles also okay because of that repetitions but dag doesn't contain any cycle within that particular graphical representation tree 
so dag as a tree don't contain any cycle that is the reason it is called as a acyclic that is the reason name given here as directed acyclic graph so dag dag tree don't contain any kind of cycles understood as compared with the other representation uh, as, as compared with the representation using the other kind of trees like the syntax tree or the uh, abstract syntax tree okay so because of this nature of the dag uh, as it doesn't contain any cycle and it generate the node for unique values only uh, there are the different uh, utilization or the advantages of the dag okay so some of the advantages i have written here in uh, one of the great advantage is the optimization of the basic block now what is the concept of basic block that in the next like, next uh, topic uh, unit we are going to see but here you know to just for our understanding purpose basic block is nothing but the some sequence of code basic block is nothing but what some sequence of code continuous sequence of code understood it is what continuous sequence of code suppose you are writing some fragment of code one is one expression second third fourth five okay and at the fifth ex, at the fifth uh, look at the fifth line for at this uh, uh, you have uh, um, written the jump instruction or go to instruction go to to line number 10 you have written here so your line number 10 might be here okay so now so this particular 1 to 5 will consider as a one basic block because it is the continuous sequence of statements okay now at the line number 6 you have written the go to 10 so the basic block only up to the line number 5 understood why because 1 to 5 is a continuous sequence of code and from 6 you are uh, you are jumping to some other instruction understood that is the reason 1 to 5 is considered as a one basic block so basic block is what continuous sequence of code within your program understood now that in detail next unit also we'll see here just i have given you the idea what is the basic block basic block is simply what uh, continuous sequence of code within your program okay so the point uh, from you make the jump uh, using go to instruction or using other instruction at that point your basic block ends understood so what exactly is the utilization of dag how it can be uh, uh, advantages that we will see so how the dag is constructed so dag is constructed using the three address code means you have to take the help of three address code as one of the type of the intermediate code to construct the dag how it will uh, done that we will see so uh, one of the important uh, purpose for which the dag is utilized is nothing but in the dead code elimination dag can be utilized, uh, utilized or in the common server expression elimination also there is a uh, dag is utilized okay that in detail next unit we have here i am just telling you uh, for what purpose we can utilize the directed or cyclic graph so you have to just keep in mind it is utilized for the code optimization okay code optimization concept in the system program also we have seen and in the next unit also we are going to see in details so code optimization is nothing but what removing uh, read uh, rearrangement of your uh, code uh, without affecting the final output of your program or without affecting the final meaning of your program understood so there are the different techniques of the code optimization like dead code elimination is there common sub expression elimination is there so dag can also help to do the code optimization understood so dag can also help to do the dead code elimination dag can also help to do the common sub expression elimination through the graphical representative way okay so once you draw the dag then you may understand you can understand how we can uh, identify the common sub expression that will see here you have to just keep in mind where you can utilize the dag so dag can be utilized for the code optimization uh, in that uh, for the dead code for the dead code elimination for the common sub expression elimination etc so here also i have mentioned the why uh, purposes of the dags okay so to determine the expression which i have been computed more than once means the expression which i have computed more than once in your program that expression is called as a common sub expression so to recognize such kind of expression there is a utilization of dag understood so dag is not just utilized in the intermediate code also 
as a uh, so dag is not just utilized as an intermediate code also the dag can also help you or dag can also help to the compiler in the uh, code optimization also that we will see so here also i have mentioned to determine the names whose computation has been done outside the basic block but used inside the basic block okay so that this point we'll discuss in the next unit you don't think about this you have to just think about uh, apart from the uh, uh, utilization of dag as a intermediate code we can also utilize the dag for the code optimization also okay now this theoretical points we have seen now now let's see the uh, how to construct the dag and the example for that so while constructing the dag the two important rules you have to follow okay one uh, that already told you we have to construct the dag uh, using the free address code understood so whatever the expression is given for that expression first you have to generate the free address code and then you have to construct the dag okay so in the rule one in the dag interior nodes always represent the operators okay this first rule you have to keep in mind interior nodes always represent the operators and exterior nodes always represent the names identifiers or the constants exterior node in the sense leaf nodes leaf node always contain what names identifiers or the constant that is the operand you can simply say so first rule is what in dag interior nodes uh, interior node contain the operators and exterior node contain the operands like identifier names or the constant etc okay so this is the first rule second rule we have while constructing the dag a check is made means every time you have to check to find if if there exist any node with the same value the same thing already i told you while constructing a dag every time you have to check what check or you have to examine what thing you have to check you have to check whether there exist a node for the same value means as i told you if this is the expression a plus b into a plus b into c now if you are generating the dag for this now you start from this for example now you are generated the dag for a plus b here like this a plus b and you give the name to this node as a t1 for example okay now next you go for next sub expression a plus b now no need to generate the node for this a plus b again you have to you have already generated the node t1 for this understood so while you are generating the dag for next part you have to check whether there exist any node with the same value means whether there exist a node for the a plus b already so for this expression yes you have already created the node for a plus b so no need, no need to create the node for the a plus b again understood so that is the thing mentioned in the second rule as i said dag don't contain any kind of node for the repeated value understood and dag don't contain any cycle also so that is mentioned in the rule second a new node is created only when there there does not exist any node with the same value means new node will be created only for the unique values only so that is mentioned in the rule too okay so these action now because of the rule second common sub expression can be easily determined what common sub expression can be easily determined or the identified or the recognized okay so these are the two important rules in the first rule i told you interior node contain the operators exterior node contain the operand and second rule indicate that for the unique value only the nodes will be created okay let's see this in the example now consider the expression same expression we are taking and construct the dag for it now expression we have in bracket in parenthesis a plus b into a plus b plus c okay now as i said first step you have to apply you have to construct now sometimes what happen directly you you may get the three address code and utilizing the three address code uh, the question may be asked to uh, draw the dag but here in this expression uh, here expression is given if such kind of plain expression is given then for such kind of plain expression first you have to generate the three address code so solution is what first generate the three address code so what will be the three address code how to generate it already i told you 
so when you are generating the three address code you have to first see the uh, precedence of the operators also if the parentheses are there first you have to think about the parenthesis expression now here first preference will be given to the parenthesis expression now there are the two sub expression in this main expression first is the a plus b into a plus b plus c so which parenthesis expression first to you will it so you should follow the left to right rule here so we will give the preference to this first in order to generate the three address code so by taking the temporary variable we generate the first statement of the tag t1 equal to a plus b then you generate the next t2 equal to t1 plus c means this part t2 equal to t1 plus c and then after finishing the parenthesis expression then you have to focus on this part okay and then you will have the t3 equal to t1 into t t3 equal to t1 now t1 is what our t1 is their part into now here should be t2 what here should be the t2 okay t1 into t2 okay so this is your three address code now after generating the three address code we have to generate the dag now let's see how to generate the dag so you have to check now for this is this is your first uh, tag instruction t1 equal to a plus b so here we start now what is the now here name of the node is given t1 and t1 equal to a plus b okay what is the name of the node t1 then t2 equal to t1 plus c t2 equal to t1 plus c so this is the another node t2 so t2 equal to t1 t1 already we have created t1 plus whether c is created no so create the node for c c then t3 equal to t1 into t2 t3 equal to t1 into t2 we already created t1 and the t2 so t3 into t1 into t2 so this is nothing but your dag understood so the common sub expression here is the a plus b what is the common sub expression a plus b how many times a plus b has appear in the expression two times but if you see in the dag only one only one node we have created for this name of the that is what t1 understood so here you can easily see how the common sub expression can be easily express into the single node only how we have how we have expressed the common sub expression here only the single node here okay so the computation is carried out only once and the store in the identifier t1 and it can be used later so here you can see t1 we have utilized t1 we have evaluated only once but it is being utilized in the second expression also uh, instruction also and in the third instruction also understood that is the reason here mentioned the computation is carried out only once and store in the identifier t1 and reuse later so name no need to compute the t1 again and again as here you can see in this expression t1 is computed two times but using the dag we can show it just compute one and use it again and again so this is nothing but the directed acyclic graph okay so uh, if you go to generate the syntax tree for this you may get the uh, what you can say you may get the large syntax tree as compared with this particular dag understood and here you can see there is a no cycle also so that is the reason this is called as a directed or cyclic graph okay now let's see the one more example to understand the difference here 
so this is the example given this is the grammar given and uh, for using this grammar it is being asked to generate the uh dat for this expression id plus id into id okay id plus id into id so first uh, you have to see uh, you have to generate the particular what you can say the three address code for this so three address code can be you can simply generate t1 equal to id into id so multiplication will given the first priority and t2 equal to id plus t1 okay now if you generate the now we will generate the three kind of tree for this same expression so you know to understand you what exactly is the dat so we will generate the parse tree first so for the parse tree you utilize the grammatical symbols so parse tree e1 derives e plus t e1 derives e plus t then e derives t then t derives f f derives id here t into f t derives f likewise you generate the parse tree how the syntax tree can be generated syntax tree in the syntax tree or the abstract syntax tree we don't uh, make the utilization of grammar symbols so syntax tree will be generated like this id plus id id plus id into id okay now how then how we can generate the dag let's see now if you compare this part as a dag you can see it is a most compact form as compared with both of this tree understood so using the tag we can generate the dag So T1 equal to ID into I. So let me generate here name of the node T1 interior node star. Now giving the name is not compulsory, but under for better understanding, we can give the name to the node T1 equal to ID into I. Okay. Then T2 equal to ID plus T1. T two equal to no. As now here we have not followed the second rule. We have made the mistake here. What is the rule? You have to generate the node for the uh, unique value only. So here T one equal to ID into ID. So ID we have to generate the node for only one value ID. Or the operand ID. So T1 equal to what? ID into ID. So for this, you can make the utilization of these things. T1 equal to T1 equal to ID into ID. And what is the name of this T1? Okay, let me draw it better way. T1 equal to kai what equal to what into ID. So you generate the uh, node for unique value only. Unique value is what ID only. T1 equal to ID and this uh, this line you have to draw like this ID into ID. Okay. T2 equal to ID plus T1. Now we already have ID also. We already we already have T1 also. So T2 equal to what? ID plus T1. Okay. And for that, simply we can have the plus ID plus T1. We have the ID also. We have the T1 also. Understood. So this is the simple way to generate the DAG. So same here it is being shown. T1 equal to ID. Into ID. That is the reason these two lines are shown like this. ID into ID. ID into ID. You can show like this also. You can show like this also. And T two equal to ID plus T one. T two equal to ID plus T one. T one is this. Understood. So that is the reason you can see uh, for the intermediate code. This abstract form. Is being chosen as a directed acyclic gram, and this DAG is also utilized in the common sub-expression elimination uh, to, uh, to identify the common sub-sub-expression of your uh, uh, program or expression. For that purpose, also there is utilization of DAG in the code optimization. But that in detail next lecture we will see. Here we have to just focus on what exactly is the DAG, 
as compared with the parse tree and the syntax tree etc understood so here you can simply you, you have simply understood what exactly are the types of the intermediate code and uh, what is their differences as compared with the one another okay so so all the three types we have discussed now first we have discussed the uh, uh, three address code then we have discussed the syntax tree and then we have discussed the dag how to how to draw the dag rules for that uh, mm -hmm. where it can be utilized it it is so dag it dag is not just utilized for that intermediate code purpose dag can be also utilized in the code optimization also that also i told you okay so uh, that's it from this lecture okay and uh, i hope all of you understood this part and if you are not having any doubt you can uh, mention that doubts in the comment section okay i will uh, definitely answer all your doubts okay so uh, if you go for uh, drawing the uh, syntax tree for this if you want to compare it with the dag then you may get the syntax tree like this multiplication then uh, here you have like this a plus b and a plus b into a plus b so again you have to go like this a plus b plus c so you can see here you have generated the node for a plus b here also i have to generate the subtree for a plus b here also but here only once it is being shown understood so from this you can easily uh, uh, understand what exactly is the difference between the syntax tree our object syntax tree and the dag and how the dag can be more useful as compared with the abstract syntax tree or the syntax tree okay so uh, even such kind of expression repeated multiple number of times for this kind of expression we will generate the single node only in case of the directed uh, cyclic graph only understood so it is being if it is being generated single node only once then multiple there will be no need to do computation will also done in the computation will also happen only once understood multiple computation will not happen understood so for so if the so that is the reason here i have mentioned the common sub expression a plus b has been expressed into the single node that is in the in the dag understood and the computation is carried out only once and stored in the identifier t1 and reused later means if afterwards 10 times 15 times also a plus b is repeated you no need to evaluate it 10 times 15 times only once time only once it will be evaluated and it will be utilized further number of times understood so to show the common sub expression uh, dag is also very useful using the dag you can easily uh, recognize the common sub expression which is being there in your uh, expression okay so here also you can easily understand uh, or identify the common sub expression which is present in your program understood like uh, suppose a plus b for the a plus b first we have draw the uh, this a plus b okay again when you go to this part again you are seeing a plus b repeated here but you can easily check here a for the a plus b you have already uh, drawn the node okay t1 as a a plus b and at this point you can easily understand uh, that the same expression is coming again so that will be considered as a common sub expression so to show the common sub expression uh, dag can be very useful and uh, from that you can easily uh, recognize or identify whether common sub expression present in your program or not okay that uh, that utilization of dag uh, for the code optimization uh, that uh, in the next lecture we will see in details here in this lecture you have to just uh, focus on the types of the intermediate code that are the three address code syntax tree and the directed or cyclic graph so in the dag in details we have seen as a part of the intermediate code okay so that's it from the today's lecture we will see the next part in the next lecture okay